All right, so I got another seven inch build coming up on the channel. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, do the frame build in this one and introduce some of the parts that are gonna go into that build. The um, uh, actual build and the flight footage and all that will be in a later video. So Foxy or sent me their new RO seven inch frame. There's a little picture of what it looks like and we'll put it together in this video. Got the uh, new Reaper F4 ESC. And this is a 65 amp 8S 4-in-1. I believe it does 128 kilohertz as well. And then they sent a F722 V3 flight controller. And this one is a 20 by 20 flight controller and the ESC is a 30 by 30 so I'll have to do something creative to get this uh, to work in the build. They did send along the new um, Lollipop Fort Plus antennas. I think I'm going to be using this with an air unit so these will like a two of these to go into the back of that. And I will be using the Gep RC 2806 and a half 1350 kV motor. And uh, I don't think Foxier has a size motor for this yet. So that's why I'm going to be using this one here. And then of course, uh, I think this frame looks better compared to the Gep RC frame. So I noticed that lately, Foxier has been putting their frame kits in these nice little plastic boxes. Their packaging is pretty nice these days. So we've got some stickers. A couple of battery straps, and these are actually pretty, you know, some kind of cloth material, and then there's like a faux leather material here. Got a nice big battery pad here for gripping the battery, and it's nice and long, so I think uh, this has a pretty long top plate. And we've got some TPU printed um, arm bumpers, and I think this is a the front, the uh, front bottom plate bumper. Got a antenna mount for the back. It looks like it was on the back standoffs. And you've got a GoPro style prong mount here. Uh, I believe this is for the camera. Yeah, this looks like the camera mount. And this looks like the uh, mount for the DJI Air unit, if you're gonna be using that, with a satellite uh, mount in the back for the GPS. And then if you're not using Air unit, then you have a separate GPS mount here for that. And then this is I think it was in the front for like one of those uh, Immortal T antennas if you're using Crosswire. So we got a set of these uh, motor wire guards or little channels to hold the motor wires on the arms. And here is all the hardware, the screws and nuts. Uh, this is for the GoPro mount. Um, and these are all standard steel screws for putting the frame together. And then you have your uh, standoffs. A couple of little uh, bags here. These are vacuum packed. So you got your arms here, and then looks like this is the top and bottom plates. So here's just a look at the arm. Looks like they're held together here with some tape or something. Mm, pretty nice quality. These days, a lot of the frames are pretty good coming out of the factory. No carbon dust, well cut. And of course, uh, chamfered edges, so they're not going to cut you. So according to my caliper, these arms are only five and a half millimeters thick. So it's a little less than a typical seven inch. Um, they're usually around six millimeters thick. All right, so here's what the top plate looks like. And here's the bottom plate. So it's not a staggered design. Uh, there's a sandwich plate here, so there's a single bottom plate, not a dual bottom plate, but staggered. So the bottom plate's 2.7 millimeters thick, sandwich plate is 2.5 millimeters thick, and the top plate is 2.5 millimeters thick. So there are no instructions in the box in terms of how to put the frame together, so I'm just going to go off of the picture here and... Um, yeah, if you built frames before, it shouldn't be too difficult, but I'll put it together and I'll explain uh, what I did when I put it together uh, after I come back. All right, so here's the frame completely assembled. It was um, very straightforward, really uh, nothing, nothing really unusual about this uh, frame build. So a couple things to note on these um, press fit nuts here: the, all the tolerances on the screws and the holes on the frame, on the carbon fiber, are very, very tight. It's not, it's like, um, not too small, but just right so that you have to do have to screw the uh, screws into the carbon a little bit. And, uh, so everything's, it makes the, basically the whole frame come together 
super solid. I mean, there's no play in any of the arms whatsoever, but it does mean that you have to be kind of deliberate in how you put all the screws in uh, for the arms. Now, each arm, there's only two screws and two press fit nuts on the other side that holds the arm in. There's a third press fit nut that you put in there for the stack screw, which I didn't put in yet because that'll be part of the build later. So if you break an arm, you just have to take two screws out and then you can slide the arm out. There's a um, like a groove, a slot for the third screw so that the arm can slide out. So if you break an arm, you don't have to take the whole frame apart. You just take two screws out, slide the broken arm out and put the new, new arm in and uh, you put the screws back in and you're good to go. But um, when you uh, basically put the uh, screws and the arms in and then this uh, sandwich plate, the press fit nuts don't easily go in. You have to use the screws and as you're tightening uh, the screw up, it will pull the press fit nut into the carbon plate and it'll hold it in place. So you want to make sure when you do that that it's nice and square and not like crooked. Otherwise you might strip out that press fit nut. So that's the only thing that you might run into a problem with. Other than that, uh, very straightforward. You just have your eight standoffs, uh, the longer screws, the, there's, there's four remaining longer screws. They went into the bottom of the front and the back. And then you put the top plate on with the very nice long battery pad here. Sometimes they give you your shorter battery pad here. It's in the, in the center section, not in the back. It covers the whole section here. You got this GoPro mount here in the front. Now the prints are, could be better. You can see there's a little bit of some, some defects just because uh, maybe they're running the printers a little bit too fast, but you know, of course, they're mass producing these, so um, can't take too long. They're good enough. I mean, they'll function, but they're not the prettiest prints in the world. And then I decided, I think at the, uh, while I was building this, I decided I was, I'm going to go with the Vista system instead of the air unit, uh, just to make it a little bit lighter, a single antenna, um, a little bit less weight, because I'm print here is kind of probably on the heavy side. We'll see how much that weighs here in a second. And then I did put the arm bumpers on and they do stay on without the um, motor in place. There's a little piece here that holds it in place right there. And of course it acts as a landing foot as well. So you're not landing on the screws here on the bottom. So again, you know, very typical uh, frame design here. There's nothing really Unusual. We've seen a lot of frames like this, of course, but of course, this is a seven inch dead cat, of course, which is what I like. No props in view. And then the rest of the stuff is going to go into the frame weight, will be the these little um, motor wire holders so that they, instead of using tape, they use these. I'm, I would say how much these weigh. I, I may just end up using some tape because just to, I might want to go for a lighter build, so I might not use those. And then I'll use both battery straps. So let's see how much everything weighs. So this is how much the frame weighs. This is probably what I'm going to go with here. 213.7 grams and then two battery straps. Uh, it takes me up to 229 grams. And then this um, air unit 3D print part is about 13 grams. And then these motor wire holders that go on the arms, although it makes the build really nice and neat. That is another five grams. So, you know, that's not too bad for a seven inch build. I might just go ahead and put them on there just because it makes the uh, the build nice and neat looking. But that's gonna do it uh, for this video. I'll have a build for this. I gotta figure out um, how I'm gonna mount the electronics because the stack area here is only only fits 30 by 30 um, stacks. There's no, there's no 20 by 20 stack mounts for the stack area. There are some, it looks like zip tie holes here in the front here. I may try and put the 20 by 20 flight controller up here somehow. I'm not sure how that would work. There's some, I think these are, these are for zip ties, not necessarily for screws, because it doesn't look like a 20 by 20 stack would fit there. And then of course, the uh, Vista will go back here. This is definitely 20 by 20. You can slide the Vista back and forth. It's not going to take up a lot of space here, but I don't feel like putting the flight controller back there where the Vista is. Um, I might have to do the ESC and then get like a 3D printed adapter for the 20x20 or go with a different uh, 30x30 flight controller. So 
we'll see. That'll be in the next video. So that's going to do it for this one. Uh, if you have any questions for the next video on this series on the Aura 7-inch, let me know in the comments below, and I'll talk to you guys in the next one.